Welcome back everyone to another episode of Quick Stop Photoshop. In today's video, we're going to cover a technique called focus stacking. This is a very useful technique when you're shooting a composition or a scene with a large depth of field and you want to get everything tack sharp from foreground all the way to the background. Now the focus stacking technique is twofold. We have the infield portion and the post processing portion. I'm going to discuss both. Obviously, we're not in the field, but I'm going to talk about what I did with the camera when I was shooting this scene here. So let's jump right in. You'll see here this image does have a large depth of field. We've got an element that's very close to the lens in the foreground, these flowers. We have a middle ground, and then we have a background, this mountain, for example. Cameras and lenses today cannot shoot this entire scene packed sharp in one exposure and that's when we're going to focus stack so when we know we're going to focus stack what we do is we set up our composition on the tripod tripod preferably we're going to take one image focusing on the foreground here and you'll see that everything else is out of focus then we're going to take another image somewhere in the middle ground where we get everything in focus in the middle ground and then we're going to take our final image on the background so then we're focusing on the mountains in the background. So now every aspect of our scene is in focus in at least one of our focused exposures. In this example I took three images. You can do more if three is not enough to get everything in focus. So now jump into Lightroom here with our photos. I like to label them one, two, and three star for foreground, middle ground, and background. That just helps me. And now because we're blending these all together, any adjustments we make in Lightroom we want to apply identically to the other two. So the way that we can do this is once we pick an exposure, make our adjustments, and then we're going to sync, check all, and synchronize all the settings so that they all look identical. So once we've done our basic adjustments in Lightroom, let's jump on over to Photoshop with these images. We're going to highlight all three, go to Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Now when all of our images have loaded into Photoshop, you'll see the three layers down here. I've renamed them for uh, just clarification, I like to do that, foreground, middle ground, and background. Now before we move forward, you'll see that even though I shot this on a tripod, there's a bit of shifting between each image. And you can see that as I cycle between. This is called focal length breathing, so the focal length just breathes a little bit as I focus on different aspects of the image. Not all lenses have this issue, but even some higher end lenses, higher end lenses like the L-series Canon, do have a bit of focal length breathing. Not to worry though because we can get rid of this in Photoshop and we do that by selecting all three images. Go to Edit, Auto Align Layers, select Auto here for the projection type and hit OK. Alright, once that's finished you'll see here that our image is much more aligned between the three. There is still a bit of shifting but that's not going to be a problem here. All right, guys, the next step is the meat and bones of the focus stacking and post-processing. This is the point where we tell Photoshop to mask out the out-of-focus pixels on all three images, only letting through the most focused part of each exposure. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all three images again, go up to Edit, Auto Blend Layers this time, Stacked Images, Seamless Tones and Colors Checked, so we're going to hit OK, and now you'll see if we go through our image here, once this is done, everything is sharp from our very foreground through our middle ground all the way to our background. And Photoshop did this by applying a mask to each layer, only letting through the in-focus or what it believes is the most in-focus pixels of that exposure. And if I find any areas where Photoshop did something a little bit funky, then you can always come over to the mask and make some custom adjustments by masking out or unmasking any areas that you may want. But Photoshop did a pretty good job on this. There you go guys, we've got a tack sharp image from foreground all the way to background with this technique. You can then create a merge visible and throw away this layer and now we have our base layer where everything is in focus. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you're feeling generous. I'll see you guys next week.